Let us start. The first thing is multiple choice questions and solution with explanations. And first, this part will be covered. Then AC circuits and then whatever topics are for transformers and then electrical machines and power converters. Electrical installation will be also covered. Now we will start this topic. First question. Casey states that the amount of charge in turning a junction is equal to the amount of charge leaving it. So it is the conservation of charge. So option D is the right one. Next question. Casey can be applied for. Casey is applied for different nodes of a network. A source transformation is. A source transformation is bilateral because a voltage source can be converted to a current source and vice versa. So option B is the right one. In source transformation, the value of the voltage and current sources change when change from voltage to current source and current to voltage source. But the value of the resistance remains the same. So option D is the right one. Next, Thevenin's theorem works for only linear circuit elements and not non-linear ones such as BJT semiconductors. So, option A is the right one: linear network. Next, idle current source have the infinite internal resistance, so we have like an open circuit, whereas an idle voltage source have zero internal resistance. So we have as a short circuit. So option C is the right one, shorting all voltage sources and opening all current sources. Next, delta connection is also known as mesh connection because its structure is like a mesh. That is a closed loop which is planar. So option B is the right one. Next. For a direct current, the main voltage value is the same as that of the RMS voltage. So, option C is the right one. Next, the superposition theorem is applied when circuit contains two or more than two sources. So, option D, multiple sources, is the right answer. Next. In superposition theorem, when we consider the effect of one voltage source, all the other voltage source are shorted, and the current source are open. So option A is the right one. Next, all the other current sources are open. So option B is the right one. Next. Thevenin voltage is obtained by opening the specified terminal, so it is open circuit voltage. It is not the short circuit voltage because if specified terminals are shorted, voltage is equal to zero. So option A is the right one. Next, Thevenin's theorem states that a combination of voltage source, current source, and resistors is equivalent to a single voltage source and a single series resistor. So, option B is the right one. Next, according to Thevenin's theorem, VTH is found across the output terminals of a network and not the input terminals. So, option B is the right one. Next, Norton current is obtained by shorting the specified terminal, so it is the short circuit current. It is not open circuit current because if specified terminals get open circuited, then current is equal to zero. So option A is the right one. Next, idle current source have infinite internal resistance, behave like an open circuit, whereas idle voltage source have zero internal resistance, behave as a short circuit. So to obtain not on resistance, all voltage source are shorted. And all current sources are open, so option C is the right one, shorting all voltage sources and opening all current sources. Next, Norton's theorem works for only linear circuit elements and not non-linear ones such as BJT semiconductor. So option A is the right one. Next, 
Norton theorem states that a combination of voltage source, current source, and resistors is equivalent to a single current source and a single parallel resistor. So, option B is the right one. Next, according to Norton's theorem, IS is found through the output terminals of a network and not the input terminals. So, option B is the right one. Next, what is the value of the form factor for sinusoidal current? So, you can write for sinusoidal current, IRMS is equal to IM by root 2. And IAV equal to root 2 IM by pi. So, form factor is equal to IRMS by IAV. After computing this value, we get pi by 2. So, option A is the right one. Next, what is the correct expression for the phase angle in an RLC series circuit? So, from the impedance triangle, we get tan phi is equal to xl minus xc by r. So, phi equal to tan inverse xl minus xc by r. So, option A is the right one. Next, the time period or periodic time t of an alternating quantity is the time taken in second to complete one cycle. So, option A is the right one. Next, a phasor is a line which represents the RMS value and phase of an alternating quantity. So, option A is the right one. Next, if two sinusoids of the same but of different amplitude and phase difference are added, the resulting is a sinusoid of the same frequency. So, option A is the right one. Next, which of the following statements associated with purely resistive circuit is correct? The answer is PF is unity. The power factor is unity. The option A is the correct. Next, average power in a pure resistive circuit is equal to product of RMS or effective values of current and voltage. That means option D is right. Next, the inductive reactance of the circuit increases with the increase in supply frequency. So, option A is the right one. Next, in AC circuit, the power curve in a sine wave having double the frequency of voltage. So, option A is the right one. Next, in an AC circuit, resistance, inductance and capacitance is connected to an AC voltage source. Determine the current in the circuit. So, you can write Z square equal to R square plus XL minus XC O square. Or XL, inductive reactance, so you can write 2 pi FL, XC. Capacitive reactants, you can write 1 by 2 pi Fc. Now, F equal to 50 hertz. L equal to 0 0.3 H. And C equal to. Next. So, you can write X equal to 2 pi into 50 into 0 0.3 after computing this value gate 94.2 ohm next xc 1 by 2 pi into 50 into 15 into 10 to the power minus 6 after computing this value gate 212.31 Ohm. Next, so you can write Z square 50 square plus 212.31 minus 94.2 
whole square so you can write 16450 so z equal to 128 ohm now current in the circuit i equal to v by z so you can write 25 by 128 0 0.2 so option b is the right one next the primary winding of a transformer has a 120 volt ac supply what is the value of secondary voltage if the turn ratio is 10 so given ns by np equal to 10 and vp primary voltage 120 volt we know that the secondary voltage by primary voltage equal to ns by np or we can write vs by 120 equal to 10 or vs equal to 1200 volt so option d is correct next the secondary voltage is 440 volt and primary voltage is 220 volt. Then a comparison of the secondary coil and primary coil. Given secondary voltage V is equal to 440 volt and primary voltage VP equal to 220 volt. We know that the Vs by VP equal to NS by NP. Or we can write 440 by 220 equal to ns by np so you can write ns by np is equal to 2 by 1 so option c is the correct next the transformer draws the no load primary current when its secondary winding is open so option c is correct next Open circuit test in a transformer is used to determine the core loss that is eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. The core loss of a transformer is independent of load but it depends upon the rated voltage. So option C is the correct. Next the transformer is a static electromagnetic device that transforms the voltage from one side of its coil to the other coil without a change in frequency. As we know, the working principle of the transformer is based on the mutual inductance, which happens at a constant frequency. So, option A is the right. Next, the efficiency of a transformer refers to the ratio of useful power output to the input power. That to be measured in the same unit, this unit is either a watt or kilowatt. Therefore, the efficiency of the transformer is maximum when iron loss equal to copper loss. So option D is correct. Next, a high permeable material made up of thin silicon steel lamination are used for laminated of transformer core and other electrical device. For this reason, first one the high resistance, second one high permeability and third one the minimum hysteresis loss. So option D is the correct. Next, hysteresis loss pH equal to kH Bm to the power 1.6 into F. So, hysteresis loss will depend on frequency. So, option A is the right one. Next, hysteresis loop will represent only hysteresis loss. It is found out by area of BH loop curve of a magnetic material. So, option C is the right one. Next, the frequency of EMF generated by generator depends upon. We know that the F equal to P into N by 120. So, option A is the right one. Speed and number of poles. Next, commutator is used as mechanical rectifying destination. It converts AC armature current into DC current. So, option D is the right one. Next, in lap winding, number of parallel paths equal to number of poles. 
so we can write the value is 4 in case of lap winding and for wave winding it will be equal to 2 so option b is the right one If field current is decreased in shunt DC motor, the speed of the motor. As a shunt field current IF decreases, so you can say the flux also decreases. As speed is inversely proportional to flux, so speed rises. So option B is the right one. Next, infinite buzzword has constant voltage and frequency. So option A is the right one. Alternator operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction. So option A is the right one. Now the machine operating is synchronous generator. So option B is the right one. Next, the armature of an alternator consists of the winding into which current is induced. So, option D is the right one. In modern alternator, the rotating part is field system. So, option A is the right one. An induction motor works with AC only. So, option B is the right one. The stator core of a three-phase induction motor is laminated in order to reduce the AD current loss. So option A is the right one. In a three-phase slip ring induction motor, brushes are connected to external star connected resistor. So option A is the right one. The induction motor shaft is made of mild steel. So option A is the right one. Oil is used in transformer for the purpose of insulation and cooling medium. So option C is the right one. The output power is maximum for a DC motor when EB is equal to V by 2. So option A is the right one. The commutator of a DC machine acts as a full wave rectifier. So option A is the right one. The DC motor needs a starter during starting to control current. So option B is the right one. Next, direction of a DC shunt motor can be reversed by interchanging the shunt field or armature terminals. So option C is the right one. In traction, the type of DC motor used is series. So option C is the right one. Which of the following motors is used in ceiling fan? So option D is the right one, induction motor. Number of parallel path in wave winding is 2. So option A is the right one. What is the formula for output voltage for bug boost converter? The output voltage of the bug boost converter we can write V output equal to T into V input 1 minus T. It can step up and step down the voltage depending upon the value of the duty cycle. So option C is the right one. If the value of the duty cycle is less than 0.5, it will work as a buck converter. So the answer is 0 0.4, so option D is the right one. Next, if the value of the duty cycle is more than 0 0.5, it will work as a boost converter.
सो द आंसर इज जीरो पॉइंट एट ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट वन ए वी एस आई इज वन इन विच द इंटरनल इम्पेडेंस ऑफ द सोर्स इज नेग्लेजेबल सो ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट वन नेक्स्ट द लाइन वोल्टेज इज द डिफरेंस ऑफ टू फेज वोल्टेज द थर्ड हार्मोनिक गेट्स कैंसल्ड आउट दो इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द फेज वोल्टेज सो ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट वन नेक्स्ट इन वी एस आई द इनपुट वोल्टेज इज मेंटेन्ड एट ए कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू एंड द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द आउटपुट वोल्टेज डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द लोड कंडीशन How the waveform of the load current, as well as its magnitude, depends upon the nature of the load impedance. So, option A is the right one. Which type of load is protected by the L series MCB? Answer is geyser. So, option B is the right one. What is the purpose of the flexible cords in domestic wiring? Option D is the right one. Connection transportable. Why three system of wiring most suitable for multi-storied building? Answer is is in fault finding with many fuses. So option D is the right one. Which is the application of DC series MCB? Answer is locomotive. So option C is the right one. Which place the three system of wiring is most suitable? Answer is multi-story building. So option D is the right one. Why separate wiring is recommended for home theater wiring and power wiring? Answer is avoid electrical interference. So option C is the right one. What is the expansion of MCB? Answer is miniature circuit breaker. So option B is the right one. What is the purpose of the fuse cutout provided at the incoming power supply? Answer is to ensure the line is not overloaded. So option A is the right one. What protection offered by residual current circuit breaker? Option A is the right one. Protection from shock. Where the phase conductor is looped in looping system of wiring? Answer is socket connection. So option D is the right one. What is the reason for home theater wiring not to run along with power wiring? Answer is avoid electrical interference in audio and video system. So option C is the right one. The objective of arding or grounding is to provide as low resistance possible to the ground. So option A is the right one. Next, soil resistance depends on option D is the right one. Which type of arding is used by transmission lines? Strip arding. So option C is the right one. What is arding? Option A is the right one. Connecting electrical machines to earth. Arding is necessary to give protection against option A is the right one danger of electric shock. Next, the advantage of neutral arding is option D is the right one. All of the above. Find the cross-sectional area of the core of a 10 tons transformer for a voltage of 50 volt at 50 hertz. The flux density is 0.9 Weber per meter square. So let us start. Number of turns sin equal to 10. E equal to 50 volt. F equal to 50 hertz. And flux density B is equal to 0.9 Weber per meter square. Now I can write flux phi is equal to 0.9 A Weber A is a cross sectional area so we can write equal to 4.44 flux F into N or we can write equal to 50 is equal to 
into zero point nine into a into fifty into ten. After computing this value, we get a equal to zero point zero two five meter square. So option A is the right one. Next, the armature of a four pole two thirty volt wave generator has four hundred conductors and runs at four hundred rpm. Calculate the useful flux per pole. So I can write number of poles P equal to four, EMF E equal to two thirty volt. Number of conductors Z equal to four hundred and N equal to four hundred RPM. As the machine is wave wound, the number of parallel paths we can write A equal to two. We know that the E equal to P phi N Z. By sixty a, or we can write flux equal to sixty a e by p z n. So we can write sixty into two into two thirty. Four into four hundred into four hundred. Now, after computing this value, we get flux per pole equal to zero point zero four three waver. So, option B is the right one. An eight pole DC generator has ninety six slots and sixteen conductors per slot. The flux per pole is forty milliwaver and the speed is nine six zero rpm. Find the EMF produced if the machine is wave wound. So let us start. P equal to eight. Z equal to ninety six into sixteen one five three six. Next. Flux per pole, zero point zero four Weber. N equal to nine six zero. In wave wound, we can write A equal to two. Now we know that the E equal to P phi Z N by sixty A. Now put this value eight into Zero point zero four into one five three six into nine six zero sixty into two. After computing this value, we get is equal to three nine three two point sixteen volt. So option D is the right one. Next, an alternating current has RMS value of 50 ampere and frequency 60 hertz. Find the time taken to reach 50 ampere for the first time. So we can write RM RMS equal to 50 ampere. So we can write I M equal to 15 into root 2. Value 70.71 ampere. Now the instantaneous equation of the current is we can write I equal to I m sine two pi f t, or we can write I equal to fifty. So fifty equal to seventy point seventy one. To sine two pi into sixty into t, so you can write seventy point seventy one sine 
वन टू जीरो पाई टी नेक्स्ट साइन वन टू जीरो पाई टी इजिकल टू कैन राइट फिफ्टी बाई सेवेंटी पॉइंट सेवेंटी वन इजिकल टू वन बाई रूट टू इजिकल टू कैन राइट साइन पाई बाई फोर Now after computing this value, we get t equal to one by one twenty into four, two point zero eight ms. So option A is the right one. A four kilowatt load takes a current of twenty ampere from a two forty volt AC supply. Calculate KVR of the load. So you can write V equal to 240 volt, I equal to 20 ampere, P equal to 4 kilowatt. If cos theta be the power factor, so you can write P equal to V I cos theta, or we can write four thousand equal to two forty into twenty into cos theta. After computing this value, we get cos theta equal to zero point eight three three. So we can write sine theta equal to 0.553. So KVR we can write VI sine theta. Now put this value 240 into 20 into 0.553. By ten to the power three, KVR. Now, after computing this value, we get two point six five KVR. So, option C is the right one. Next, a 10 volt induction motor is supplied by a 6 volt alternator, which is driven at 1400 RPM. If the motor runs with a slip of 2%, what is its speed? Now, first we calculate F. F equal to P N A by 120. Now put this value 6 into 1400. By one twenty, seventy hertz. Now the synchronous speed n is equal to. We can write one twenty f by p. One twenty into seventy by ten. So we can write eight four zero rpm. Now, slip S equal to N S minus N by N S. Slip of two persons, so we can write S equal to zero point zero two N S eight four zero minus N by eight four zero. After computing this value, we get n equal to eight two three point two RPM. So option D is the right one. Next, a single phase transformer has four hundred primary and one thousand secondary turns. The net cross-sectional area of the core is sixty centimeters square. The primary winding is connected to a 
500 volt supply find the emf induced in the secondary winding so let us start n1 equal to 400 n2 equal to 1000 a is equal to 60 cm square or we can write 0.006 meter square e1 500 volt we know that the e1 equal to 4.44 phi m a phi n1 और फाइव एम इक्वल टू फाइव हंड्रेड बाई फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर इंटू फिफ्टी इंटू फोर हंड्रेड नो आफ्टर कंप्यूटिंग दिस वैल्यू गेट फाइव एम इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फाइव सिक्स वेवर नाउ ई एम एफ इंड्यूस्ड इन द सेकेंडरी वाइंडिंग वी कैन राइट ई टू इक्वल टू 4.44 phi m f n2 or we can write 4.44 0.0056 into 50 into 1000 after computing this value we get e2 equal to 1243.2 volt so option a is the right one next a dc machine is generating 125 volt while delivering 8 ampere to a load if its armature circuit resistance is 1.35 ohm what voltage must be generated internally in the armature so we can write v equal to 1 to 5 volt i l equal to 8 ampere r a equal to 1.35 ohm so equal to we can write v plus i a r a or we can write 125 plus 8 into 1.35 after computing this value we get 1 to 5 plus 10.8135.8 volt so option c is the right one Next, the voltage applied to the stator of a three-phase four-pole induction motor has a frequency of 50 Hz. The frequency of the EMF induced in the rotor is 1.5 Hz. Determine speed at which motor is running. So, let us start. We can write N is equal to 120 F by P, or we can write 120 into 50. By four, so N is equal to one five zero zero RPM. Now rotor EMF frequency F two equal to we can write F two equal to SF, or F two equal to one point five equal to S into fifty. So S equal to slip 1.5 by 50, or we can write 0.03. So the actual speed of the motor N equal to 1 minus S into N S. Now put this value 1 minus 0.03. Into one five zero zero. After computing this value, get n equal to one four five five RPM. So option A is the right one. 
find the efficiency of a 150 kV transformer at 25% full load at 0.8 power factor lagging. If copper losses are 1600 watt at full load and iron losses are 1400 watt. Now let us start. Output at 25% full load and 0.8 power factor lagging. We can write. One five zero into ten to the power three into zero point two five into zero point eight. After computing this value, we get one five. Next, we can write copper loss. Is equal to one six zero zero to zero point two five whole square to what twenty five percent full load. So after computing this value, we get one hundred watt. Next iron loss. One four zero zero watt. So total loss, total losses, we can write one hundred plus one four zero zero watt. One five zero zero watt. So efficiency equal to. Output by output plus losses plus losses. So you can write plus one five zero zero. After computing this value, we get. Zero point nine five two four, or we can write ninety five point two four percent as. So option A is the right one. A series RLC circuit has R equal to ten ohm, A equal to zero point one hindu, and C equal to eight microfarad. Determine Q factor of the circuit at resonance. So we can write resonance frequency. If not equal to one by two pi root LC, so one by two pi zero point one into eight into ten to the power minus six. So we can write one seventy eight hertz. Now Q factor equal to We can write two pi f not l by r. Now put this value two pi into one seventy eight into zero point one by r equal to ten. So you can write eleven point eighteen. So option D is the right one. A voltage of 400 volt is applied to a series circuit containing a resistor and inductor and a capacitor. The respective voltage across the components are 250 volt, 200 volt, and 180 volt, and the current is 5 ampere. Now determine the phase angle of the current. Now we can know that R equal to resistance 250 by 5, 50 ohm. Now the inductive reactance, XC equal to 200 by 5, 40 ohm. 
capacitive reactance Xc equal to 180 by 5 36 ohm now the impedance Z is equal to root square plus XL minus XC whole square now put this value root 50 square plus 40 minus 36 whole square 2500 plus 16 after computing this value you get 50.16 ohm now the phase angle of the current you can write an inverse x by r x equal to xl minus xc or we can write tan inverse 4 by 50 is equal to 4.57 degree lagging so option a is the right one next an 8 pole 400 volt shunt motor has 960 wave connected armature conductors the full load armature current is 40 ampere and flux per pole is 0.02 weber the armature resistance is 0.1 ohm and the contact drop is 1 volt per brush now calculate the full load speed of the motor so let us start we can write p equal to 8 v equal to 400 volt z equal to 960 next i equal to 40 ampere flux equal to 0 0.02 weber next r a equal to 0 0.1 ohm and a equal to 2 and total brush drop You can write 2 volt. Next. So you can write back EMF EB equal to V minus IARA minus brush drop. So you can write EB equal to 400 minus 40 into 0 0.1 minus 2 394 volt next again we know that the EB equal to P5 ZN by 60A n is the full load speed so n equal to 60 aeb by p5 z now put this value n is equal to 60 into 2 into 394 by 8 into 0 0.02 into 960 after computing this value we get n is equal to 308 rpm so option b is the right one